Look at him the play. Look at him the play. Look at him support the play. Look at him 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 the play. Real Madrid claims the bragging rights in the Super Cup, but Cristiano Ronaldo is left red faced. Amanda is home based Super Eagles brace up for the return leg of the 2018 Champ qualifier after the shocker in Cotonou. While these and many other sports stories will make up the show tonight, this is Sports Center. I am Juliet Mafua. Also on the program, for Usain Bolt, the legacy remains intact, even if the legacy beats. Well, it's been a busy day in sports with loads of talking points. Now let's service some of the biggest headlines in graphics. Well, the home base Super Eagles are back in Nigeria after what can best be described as a short loss to Benin Republic uh, in the 2018 African Nations Championship qualifier uh, played in Cotonou on Sunday night. Well, the team arrived in Lagos on Monday evening and immediately flew to Kano where they have been camped and the venue for the return leg. An 89th minute penalty scored by Benin captain Sabo Mama gave the Skuros the win and the advantage ahead of the match in Kanu on Saturday. That's the return leg, August 19. Uh, despite the loss, uh, the players and officials remain confident Nigeria will skill the hurdle and qualify for the 2018 Chan tournament in Kenya. Rather, pictures of the players uh, arriving in uh, Nigeria. Where Real Madrid claimed the advantage heading into the second leg of the Spanish Super Cup. How Barcelona did get to miss Neymar. Uh, that wasn't the main story though. Cristiano Ronaldo came on in the second half, scored a beauty and was then sent off. But the second leg comes up on Wednesday. But we get to relieve the highlights of the season's first El Clasico at the Camp Nou. Isco. Marcelo on the overlap. Tanundo! Oh, what a dreadful, dreadful moment for Gerard Piquet. Well, Real Madrid, Messi nips in. That should never have been his. Still Messi. Luis Suarez again. And what's the referee going to give? It's a penalty kick. Luis Suarez brought down the Real Madrid players for test. Kelo Navas. Messi scores. Rakitic couldn't get his shot away. Delightful football. And here's Cristiano Ronaldo. Up against PK. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Off comes the shirt. There's the pose. But most importantly, it's a brilliant, brilliant goal from Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, he's given it away to Lucas Vasquez. Vasquez to Asensio. It's a marvellous Marvellous goal from Marco Asensio. And this is turning into a wonderful night for Madridist Madridistas. You know what I mean. Madridistas.
Ravel. The 2017 IAAF World Championship has been concluded uh, after 10 days of stiff competition. Anandro's participation has been best described as shambolic, uh, a situation that has been hinged on the country's poor preparation uh, for the championship. Nigeria didn't even get close to the medal table, uh, but that was not a surprise for many. Uh, the big surprise was Usain Bolt and the dramatic end to his astonishing career. Now let's check out some very unforgettable moments at Athletics' biggest fiesta in London. Well, it's a clean start. It's a good start by Coleman. The Americans flying in lane number five. It's the American leading the Jamaican at the moment. It's going to be Coleman. But on the outside in lane number eight, 9.92 seconds is the world champion here in London. The fifth fastest of all time at 9.74 seconds. The American athlete out of lane number eight was poised, was controlled. His teammate Christian Coleman, two one hundredths of a second behind, picks up the silver for a US 1-2. And Usain Bolt in his final individual race runs 9.95 seconds for bronze. The fairy tale in the individual event wasn't to be for the Jamaican. It was a close race, but America get one and two. So it's a good start. It's a pretty even start as well. At the moment, Tulu of the Ivory Coast in lane number four is running well. Tulu's going to take this. Oh, but Tory Bui on the line. Well, 10.84 seconds. Mary Jose Tulu of the Ivory Coast missed the podium twice last year in Rio. But did Tory Bui do enough? It's come up, Tory Bowie, 10.85 seconds. The American is the world champion. Well, that looked very tight on the line. I think many people here thought Tarlu had done that. And what an upset. Elaine Thompson out of the medals. Not the gold, not the silver or the bronze. She's in fifth. Skippers has been given the nod for the bronze with 10.96. Tarlu got away brilliantly here, and Elaine Thompson was under pressure. Tarlu clearly ahead here. Watch Bowie coming now. Third from the left-hand side. Tarlu holding form, holding form, and she did it on the dip. With Usain Bolt in their team for the very last time. The Olympic champions. Rarely has there been a greater sense of anticipation ahead of any race in history. Great Britain going well in seven. Let's watch the changeovers. Britain now up on the outside past the Chinese. Gatlin running well. And the Jamaicans coming through now. It's a brilliant bend by Great Britain. The Jamaicans have some work to do. So do the Americans. Britain, Jamaica, and the United States. And look at this. From Mitchell Blake, it's Great Britain. Great Britain, yes! I can't believe it. Great Britain have taken the gold medal. Usain Bolt is limping down the track. It hasn't ended as he would have liked. We'll salute him in a moment. But let's celebrate the great British quartet. It's a new British record. And they have storms to gold on a night that we will never, ever forget. No British team have ever won this title. Silver twice. This time it's gold. Ahead of the United States in silver. Japan got the bronze as Bolt is consoled on the track. He knew it was time to retire, but who knew, who knew that Great Britain would come out on top as we say goodbye to the greatest of all time. These four young men have etched themselves into global history.
wow, what drama in London, what dramatic way uh, for you, Simbo, to end this glittering career. Well, it's sports journalists, uh, veteran sports journalist, Deji Yamoto Yubo, will now join me on the show as we look at major talking points in sports. Uh, we'll come back to talk about you, Simbo, but let's start with uh, Team Nigeria. Uh, Team Nigeria re returning without a medal. Yeah. Really, could mm. Nigerians have really expected any medal? I, I don't think we had the right to expect anything better. Um, like there's a cliche that says, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So um, the irony of, the, of it is that we know what to do. Olympic champions, world champions are produced over time. It's not, it's not by magic, it's not by accident. It's a deliberate attempt at unearthing talent, nurturing talent, developing talent, supporting that talent to get to the enviable heights of either Olympic gold or a world that legs gold. We're not doing that, so we shouldn't really expect anything. Yeah, a blessing of Kabari as always. So what's the medal hopeful mm, yeah. uh, going into the, the championship? Uh, but we saw blessing of uh, failing in all our events, as did other athletes. Now, there's been the talk of uh, let's return to school sports. Is that where we've really lost it in Nigeria? Definitely. I think across all sports in Nigeria, we're trying to build from the top to the bottom. And it should be from the bottom up. How do I mean? You've got to spread your drag at the grassroots level. You've got to put facilities in disadvantaged communities because there might be talents there that you're missing. So you spread the dragnet and you try and unearth the talents. Of course, school sports, the best platform because most kids, are, almost all kids are in schools. And if you have school sports, you're likely to develop, to unearth the talents, discover the talents. And then it's a process of nurturing the talent. I read somewhere that it takes about eight to 10 years to nurture to unearth, nurture, and develop an athlete to be a world champion mm -hmm. and Olympic champion. But what we do here is six months to a major tournament, uh, we're looking for money, we gather people, they go on a training tour, and we expect things to happen. That's it's also not, the case uh, to not this going, uh, championship, not all the build up, yeah. the visa To be ages. fair, I think Les Nokakwani has done tremendously well. You know, I hear people making fun of her when she comes to a, an event and she doesn't win a gold medal. She's done so well. She's been our only shining mm. light, and we've got to respect her. And it's been more for of that. a personal effort from exactly. her. Exactly. So, where are the upcoming stars? I mean, I was watching the World Athletics. It was very sad. You were seeing Ivorians, you were seeing South Africans. The sprints, of course, the long distances, we don't have mm. any say. But in the sprints, the 100 to the 400 individual and the relays were always there. At the Olympics, at the World Athletics Championships, we were nowhere you were seen. Yeah. Ivorians were seen. South Africans were seen, but people from athletes from Botswana making a name. Even, even, even Chinese athletes yeah. getting on I'm the even talking about well. African <laughs> countries surprising. now, you know. Okay. We are, we're nowhere and it's so sad because these were strong areas. Mm. These were places where we won Olympic medals before. Places where Nigeria athletes. once dominated. The four by four no hundred meters women got to the final. They placed fifth. But, you know, um, we really have to do a whole lot. And it's not going to happen overnight. Okay. So Let's we start now. Yeah. Let's talk your symbol now. Uh, just when uh, the world of athletics was trying to recover from the shock of mm -hmm. the 100 meters, and pff, we get that to the 4 by 100 meters relay. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the way you send boats wanted to end this, this career. Mm -hmm. um, it, it wasn't the script. It wasn't. Yeah, it, it wasn't the script, but I felt that you said himself decided to retire because his body is telling him it's time to go. And I think it should, that showed at these championships. You said both kinds of mirrors Muhammad Ali, who um, also transcended his own sport and at the end had one or two losses he might have avoided. But that is not taking anything away from what Usain Bolt has done for the sport. Usain Bolt came on the scene at a time when people were tired of athletics. There was too much drug stories, so many scandals and all that. Even up till now, there's scandals. He seemed to so be the only a, shining he, light. He seemed to be the only shining light. And then his personality, the warmth, the gregariousness. Mm. You know, a lot of people, you don't have to like athletics. The tendency is that you would like Usain Bolt. You know, so, and he brought tremendous goodwill and interest in the sport. So I'm sure they will find some kind of ambassadorial role, find something okay, for so him we, to we do. We saw the IWAF you know, presenting yeah, him. Um, definitely. I'm sure they will find some kind of ambassadorial role Find something okay, for so him we, to we do. We saw the IWAF you know, presenting yeah, him uh, definitely. with the plate having but, all of his pictures. But you know, he's um, time passed. He's done so well. Nine, Twenty-two medals across 
both the world yes. and the Eight Olympic, Olympic goals, 19, 19 world championship gold titles. So, I mean, yeah, mm. it, it would have preferred a better ending, but it doesn't take anything away from the legacy. Sure thing. Okay, uh, of course, uh, the, the memory for most fans of Usain Bolt isn't that last one. That's not the one you want to remember Usain Bolt with. And so it, come, it brings up all the talks of uh, maybe one, one more race, Usain Bolt, so, so we remember you on the podium. Mm. Uh, but the sprint legend is saying, no, uh, I'm not coming back. Britain, Jamaica, and the United States. And look at this. From Mitchell Blake, it's Great Britain. Great Britain, yes! I can't believe it. Great Britain have taken the gold medal. Usain Bolt is limping down the track. It hasn't ended as he would have liked. We'll salute him in a moment. A golden farewell is what he deserved, uh, no doubt, and uh, we'll always remember him as a legend of the sport. Now, let's talk about the ITTF, uh, the Nigeria Open. That was what it was supposed to be, mm. Nigeria Open. But then we had the Egyptians having the last say. Well, um, uh, Osa always comes here and always tends to win. It looks like Nigeria is the second home, the Egyptian who won. <laughs> up. But what I liked about the whole event is the fact that you're bringing world-class sporting events to Lagos and that is key. If you're if you at the event, if you saw the quality of the players, it was a world-class event and that is very important. If you want Lagos to be a sports hub like the governor wants to do, like the people working in the Lagos City Sports Commission want to do, and it's very good to see because if you attract top quality world-class events like that, it inspires the youth. It inspires a lot of young people to say, hey, I want to be there. Yeah, you talk, I want talk, to talking be about like the that, inspiration, you know? we saw Funke Oshonaike uh, and, mm. uh, of course, Arno Quadri. Uh, most especially Funke, there's been the talk of uh, it's about mm. time. She yeah. steps down. Yeah. About who takes over? Looking at the Nigeria Open, how well, do you judge the upcoming uh, tennis stars? Ah, uh, well, um, it's very tough when you have legends like Funke Oshonaike. Arno Quadri was beaten mm -hmm. by a Nigerian, mm -hmm. you know, so um, that's a positive. Because people have been saying this guy should retire. Hey, where, like you said, where is the, uh, where the next taking generation over. Yeah. taking over? But you do feel that they can't go on forever. So at some point, you have to find the mm. talents that will take over from these ones and um, continue to develop Nigeria's. Well, at least table tennis is some, a sport where we tend to be doing the right thing. We might not be getting to the world class level, but Arnold Quadri. Funke Oshanaike, they're doing very well on the international circuit. A lot of other younger yeah. players are coming through. So, something positive to take from there. But, you would know that the ITTF, the Nigerian Table Tennis Federation, and particularly someone like Eni Tonshodi and a few other guys, are really going out of their way to get things done. Okay, so, next up for, for Arino Quadri mm. is going to be the Table Tennis World Cup. Uh, that's one going down in Belgium. And he's promised it will not be disappointing at uh, the country in this one. Mm. Well, the Chan Eagles, the stats did favor them uh, against the uh, Benin Republic. Uh, but the Squirrels had other ideas. One nil in Cotonou. Was that a shocker? Was that a stunner for you? Well, for me, no. For me, um, there's this tendency that Nigerian teams don't travel well. National teams don't tend to travel well. And so I wasn't surprised. I was even a bit happy that it was 1-0. Um, we heard it was a bad pitch. It was a late penalty. Those things tend to yeah, happen. Yeah, and the president, but, Amaji Pinnick, yeah, already talking about yeah, poor officiating. Exactly. But 1-0 is retrievable. And yeah, it could have been better if you've got an away goal, but 1-0 is retrievable. And I think the guys have enough in the mm. tank to come back here and get a result because it will be very good to see them at the Chan um, Nations Cup. Okay, so uh, that's, that's the focus now, the team back in, in Lagos, um, back in Nigeria rather, uh, in Kano, preparing for that return leg. So just how optimistic are the players? All glory to God, because I think we did our best uh, in Benin, but just like football, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I think it happened in the dying minute of the game, at the 89th minute of the game, they give them a penalty kick, that's part of the game, but I think... Our next game against them on Saturday, I think we're going to come all out because we need to qualify our beloved country for the Chan 2018 in Kenya. Uh, we, we didn't lack any, any, any position, but uh, we are, would like us to work on the second leg it's for our strikers. Because we need goals, so they, they have to, to score. Because without goals, we, we won't win and we won't qualify. So they need to work on that uh, area of it. 
I believe we'll qualify for the next round in Chan because we, we, we did very well in Benin Republic. It was unfortunate that we lost the game at the at the dying minute with a, with a, a, a penalty. So they are not better than us. For me, they are not better than us. So I believe we will qualify on come on Saturday. I believe we will qualify by the grace of God. Well, the return leg will come up on Saturday, uh, August 19, at the Sanya Bacha Stadium in Kano. Super Cup. Now, Cristiano Ronaldo surely having the bragging right to saw the picture he posted uh, right after the game. Mm. But he has a five-game ban now. Mm. You think... It's five games. It, it was started, 12, 12 match ban. Uh, was, was that a bit of leniency there, five games? Well, uh, maybe they took into consideration the fact that it was, it was not a push. It was a touch. He shouldn't have done it, but it wasn't done with a lot of malicious intent. Mm. It wasn't very rude. It wasn't, but it was wrong. But whatever, you're and laying a hand well, on the yeah, referees it, it, and the rules. It was, it, it was yeah. wrong, and maybe they felt five matches. I think it's enough punishment. It will send a message. You don't lay your hand. On exactly. the official, because That's if you point. if you go the way of twelve match ban, I think it would have been too excessive. Because it wasn't like he had produced a okay. bad tackle and then got sent off and then reacted. It was well, maybe simulation. Some have said it wasn't simulation. You can argue back and forth. But well, he what he have, has now he is a five match ban. He has a five match ban, and he will learn from that. All right, uh, and uh, Barcelona, uh, of course, uh, str struggling without uh, Neymar. And uh, we saw Neymar uh, hitting his first goal on his debut for mm. PSG. Mm. Well, I, I honestly feel for Neymar because what that transfer has done is he's heaped enormous pressure on him. In, everybody now expects that PSG should walk to the title in France. It's not a given. We have a Monaco side who are the defending champions, who have a very good young youthful, youthful side that they always tend to produce players to do the business for them. For him as well, in the Champions League, that's where PSG will be, their metal will be really tested. Do they have enough on the surface okay. to make a play in the Champions? Because that's the one mm. they really want. Um, if, you, if he wins the friendly title, they expected PSG I mean, when to you win have the, the title. World, the, the, exactly. the world, um, and then we hear most that, expensive player so in your squad. You in the, in the this five years, league, yeah. within these five years, he has to deliver the Champions League for PSG. Whether it's going to be possible, <laughs> who knows? All right, the pressure is sure on Neymar. Oh, Many thanks for your time on the show with us tonight. Uh, the Premier League is back and while the opening weekend saw many familiar faces returning on the scene, uh, there were many new players on show to light up the opening weekend of the season. Now with the heavy price tags on their shoulders, fans' expectations were high and so was the pressure on the lads. Uh, but from Morata to Lukaku and Lacazette, the new boys all got off the mark to settle in quickly. So if opening day is anything to go by, then fans can be in for a goal fiesta. English Premier League clubs have splashed big prior to the just start a season in a bid to improve their squads and challenge for the title. While it may take a while for some of these signings to integrate and establish themselves, some have already started still in the show. One of them is Alexander Lacazette, the France international joined Arsenal from Olympic Lyon for a club record £52.7 million. Lacazette, who described the move as a childhood dream, started for Arsenal against Leicester City in the season opener. He scored his first goal of the match in the second minute. Served them so well towards the end of last season. And then he with the cross. And it goes in. It's the opening goal. Alexander Lacazette announces his arrival in the Premier League inside the first two minutes of the game. Egyptian Mohamed Salah ended his romance with the Italian league when he quit Roma for Liverpool in a deal worth £34.3 million. The versatile forward started from the right side of Liverpool's attack in a 3-3 away draw against Watford. He scored Liverpool's third goal. Now running towards Firmino, Gomez in no man's land, it's Firmino and it's touched in by Salah! A debut goal for Mo Salah! Varro Morata's move to Chelsea was highly celebrated, but his constant comparison with ejected striker Diego Costa popped early pressure on the Spaniard. But his goal in the official debut for the club in Chelsea's shabby home loss to Burnley may ease the pressure. Alvaro Morata off and running in the Premier League. Is that the catalyst to an extraordinary comeback at Stamford Bridge? 3-1. After 13 years at Manchester United, Wayne Rooney was welcomed back at his boyhood club Everton. At 31, he may not be able to replicate his exploits 
with United at Everton, but Rooney is having a bright restart at Goodison Park by scoring the only goal that gave Everton maximum points against stubborn Stoke. This is better from Everton, Calvert Lewin. It's Rooney! Rooney's successor at Manchester United, Romelu Lukaku, has started life at Old Trafford with ease. Scoring a brace in his first league game for the club may be good signs. But should anyone expect anything less after paying a whopping £75 million for a player? Well, he looks quite exposed there, isn't he? Just 1v1 at the back. It's clipped in the header from Lukaku. It's two for Lukaku. It's two for Manchester United. Lukaku, who is on a hat trick. Still ahead on the program. <laughs> Master of the tennis court, Roger Federer, booted out of the Montreal Masters, is full loss in 2017. Right, the Nigeria Professional Football League reaches its crescendo and we're now down to four match days and the battle for points can get any fiercer. So how did it all go down on match day 34? Plata United consolidating the position at the top after urging MFMFC 1-0 in what could turn out to be the title decider. Uh, Iba Johnson's uh, third minute opener enough to secure the vital three points for Kennedy Baboya's side. Now Plata are now unbeaten in 36 old matches at the Rankham Stadium. Aqua United closing the gap on MFM with a thrilling thrashing of Niger Tornadoes and champions Rangers peeping Sunshine Stairs 1-0 uh, while Ayimba seen off for ABS 3-0. As we look at the table, we have played to leading the log with 62 points, so 6 points above MFM in 2nd. Aqua United 3rd with 54 points, same as Ayimba in 4th and now Kanemi stay 5th. And just below is Gombe United. ABSFC and Remo Stairs battling to be the drop. Radra Fernandao will be the new world number one from next Monday after Roger Federer withdrew from the Cincinnati Masters with a back injury. And this comes after the Swiss tennis legend shockingly lost to Germany's Alexander Verev at the Rogers Cup final. Uh, Verev ranked eighth, he won 6 3 6 4 uh, to claim his second Masters 1000 title and extend his winning run to 10 matches. A 19 time Grand Slam winner, uh, Federer. Lost for the third time in 38 matches this year. And Nadal will replace Andy Murray at the top of the standings on Monday. All right there. So that's what we have on the show. Thanks for letting us share your night. Let's do this tomorrow, God willing. I am Juliet Muff. Well, have a good night.